Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, we will talk today about vectors and solve a couple of problems. Uh, this lecture is called Vectors 01. It's part of the course Math Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. Now, this course is uh, a continuation of another course called Math for Teens presented on the same Unizor.com website. Um, now, the Math for Teens is basically more mostly theory and uh, this course, Math Plus and Problems, is mostly problems. Um, it's very important actually to solve problems and uh, what I recommend you to do is um, every lecture presented on Unizor.com has video and textual parts. Video is whatever you see right now and uh, the textual part basically contains exactly the same material in the textbook format. So it might actually make sense to read the problem first from the textual part, try to solve it yourself. That's the most important part of it. Even if you do not come up with a complete solution, it's still important to think about it. And then you can watch the lecture or can you read the textual part, etc. Now the site is, the unresolve.com site is uh, totally free. There are no advertisement. Um, no strings attached, sign-in is optional, you don't have to. If you're just learning something yourself, by yourself, without a group or a teacher or whatever, you don't really have to sign in. Uh, well, that's it. So let's get to business. Now, I have two problems, both related to vectors. One is just a very trivial one, and another may be a little bit more involved. So let's start with the first one, and it's related to scalar product of two vectors. Sometimes it's called dot product. So if you have two vectors, A and B, you put dot in between, that is resulting in certain operation on uh, the vectors. So let me just remind you that in coordinate form, let's say A is in the two-dimensional uh, world has two coordinates, A2 and, A, and uh, A1 and A2. B has B1 and B2 in a two-dimensional world. Now their scalar product would be A1, B1 plus A2, B2. Correspondingly in three-dimensional or any-dimensional uh, case uh, you, you can have n coordinates, and that would be an n-dimensional vector, and the formula would, would be exactly the same, plus a3, b3, plus a4, b4, etc. So that's what scalar product is. So the result of the scalar product of two different vectors is a number, a real number, scalar. Now, here is the problem. Now, I present this problem in a two-dimensional case. So let's say you have two different vectors. A and B. Now, you have to find such a vector x. Let's call coordinates x and y. Or x1, a, y, uh, x2, doesn't really matter. So you have to find coordinates of this vector such that it's that product with A is a number C, which is given, and that product with B is another number, which is given. So you have two vectors which are given, which means their coordinates are known, and you have two numbers, you have to find the vector x, y, such that it's that product with A is C and with B is D. Well, okay, again, in coordinates it's quite simple actually. What you do is, what's the definition of this? What's x a? Well, that's uh, a1 x plus a2 y. And we know it's supposed to be equal to c, right? Same thing here. b1 x plus b2 y is equal to d. Well, this is a system of two linear equations with two unknowns, which means 
we can just very simply resolve this particular thing in a uh, regular algebraic method of uh, uh, solving linear equations. So, I can start with very simple thing. This system has unique solutions only in case when the determinant of this matrix of coefficients, which is a1, a2, b1, b2, which is equal to a1, b2 minus a2, b1, when it's not equal to zero. Now, from the matrix uh, theory, which is presented in the prerequisite course, Mass for Teams. Um, uh, that, that's where it was actually ex explained, that if the determinant is equal to zero, then system is linearly dependent. And if they are linearly dependent, let's say these coefficients are exactly double of these coefficients. So if it happens, then if d is double of z, then this equation is just not needed at all. So they have one equation with two uh, variables and they have infinite number of solutions. If d is not double of c, we have no solutions. But there is no unique solution. Unique solution is only if this determinant not equal to zero. And if you will start solving this equation in a very simple way, for example, you want to get rid of y and have a uh, value of x. So what do you do in this particular case? You multiply this by b2, you multiply this by a2, then it will equalize these coefficients. You subtract and you will have only x, right? So what do we have? a1, b2, b2, x, minus a2, b1, x, equals to c, b2, minus b, a2. So if you will resolve it for x, you will see that x is equal to cb2 minus da2 divided by a1, b2 minus a2, b1, which is the, the determinant of this matrix. So only if it's not equal to 0, you have a unique solution. And similarly, you can solve it for y. So that's a simple problem. Now, just let me expand it a little bit. Obviously, it can be expanded to three or any number of dimensions, because in the three dimensions, you have three different coefficients, and x has three different unknown uh, coefficients, which means you need three vectors. So you will have a, b, and c, let's say, in a three-dimensional world. And that would gives you, that, that, that can give you a unique solution for um, x if you know the scalar product with every uh, known vector. Um, and same thing with n-dimensional case. So you can have n n-dimensional vectors, let's say a1, a2, a3, etc. And you have the scalar product of x with a, e each one of those. And then you can make exactly the same system of n linear equations with n unknown and uh, again if determinant of that n-dimensional square matrix if it's not equal to zero you have a unique solution so that's basically kind of an illustration with um, of um, scalar product and uh, by the way if you remember that you can implement you can represent the vector x Let's go back to two-dimensional case. You can represent vector x in orthogonal system of system of. It's not working about this one. Also, not very much. Okay, you can represent a uh, vector x as sum of. So let's say this is a, a unit vector i and this is unit vector j in orthogonal system of coordinates. Then x can be represented as x1 times 
vector i plus x2 uh, vector j. So that would be, now this would be x1 and this would be x2. Now, what is x1 and what is x2? Let's multiply x times i. What is it? Well, if you will multiply it by i, i times i, scalar product of a unit vector by itself, uh, the angle between uh, i and i is zero, so cosine is equal to zero, so that would be just a unit vector, which means that would be x at x1, the result of this, plus i times j, but i and j are perpendicular to each other, so the scalar product is um, the number, how, how to get the scalar product, that's modulus of a modulus of b times cosine of angle between them. That's the definition, right? So i times j would be 0. So this would be x1. So what is interesting is that coordinate is a result of a scalar product of the vector with unit vector in that particular um, axis of coordinate. And similarly, x times j would be j times i would be 0, and that would be x2, which is equal to x2. So my original problem, when I told you that relative to a, the uh, scalar product is c, and relative to b, scalar product of unknown vector x is, is d. It's basically like representing the x as a sum of vector a, coordinate c and vector b with coordinate d. That would be exactly the same thing. That's what make multiplication scalar that product of x with a to be equal to c and x with b would equal to b. But that's not exactly always because, I mean it's similar, but it's not exactly always because these are perpendicular to each other, a and b are not. So that's not exactly the same, but similar. Okay. That's it for this problem. It's a very simple one. Just system of linear equations would solve the problem. Now, since we have just touched the scalar product, the dot product, let's talk about vector product, cross product. So, just as a reminder, if you have two vectors, let's say A cross B, that's, in this case, it's a vector. Again, scalar product results in a scalar, in a number, no matter what dimensions are. Vector product is defined for three-dimensional case, primarily for purposes of physics, because our world is, well, traditionally three-dimensional. We're not talking about relativity, time, etc., etc. So geometrically, we're talking about three-dimensional world. So all these vectors are three-dimensional, and the vector product is defined as a vector. Now, what kind of a vector? Well, if uh, A and B are actually defining some kind of a plane, basically, right? If you have two vectors, A and B, you can always have a plane. Then this is a perpendicular, that would be C, a perpendicular to this plane. Now, if it's from A to B, so this is a direction of the angle alpha. So all you need is basically the magnitude. So direction you know. You have this perpendicular to both or perpendicular to the plane. So that's a direction of the vector. Now its magnitude is the product of magnitudes times sine of angle. And angle is measured from this to this. Uh, so that's the definition. Okay, now the problem. The problem is you also are given two vectors, like in a, pre like in a previous case. You have vector A 
which has three coordinates and vector b which has three coordinates now you have to find vector x if it's given x times a this is the cross product vector product of x and a is equal to b this is vector this is vector their vector product is a vector and that's equal to b which means all coordinates of this is equal to coordinates of this obviously and and there is one more a condition which is actually necessary but first let me explain you why it's necessary why this is not really defining our vector x uniquely let's go back to my picture if you have these two vectors one is x another is a and their vector product is b now if I will turn x within this plane. Uh, let's say I will increase its length by 2, by factor of 2, but decrease the angle in such a way that its sign will, will, will decrease by 2. So the product, the direction will not change. If I change x within the same plane, the direction of b will not change. Not to change its magnitude is simple. I can move the x, I stretch it by a factor of 2, but reduce the angle uh, in such a way that the sign will be uh, decreased by the factor of 2. And the product of magnitudes of a, magnitude of x, and sign between these would be exactly the same. So my problem is that x is not uniquely defined if you define a and b. It can have many different axes. So to make this problem having a unique solution I have to add one more condition I have to fix this angle and I have decided to do it in a very very simple way A is perpendicular to X that's the simplest angle I can come up with obviously now with this condition the problem does have a unique solution uh, okay now geometrically how can it be done well look if b is a vector product of x and a so b is supposed to be perpendicular to a and b is supposed to be perpendicular to x right exactly the same x a b is perpendicular to both of them that's the basic definition of vector product and I also have this so all three vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other that's a relief actually it's very kind of an easy situation it's like a orthogonal system of coordinates and you have one vector along one coordinate another along another and the third one along the third coordinates so that's kind of a make the whole problem much easier okay so geometrically we have actually solved this problem because again since we know a and b so this is b this is a this is b and this is x now i know that all three of them are mutually perpendicular right which means x is perpendicular to plane defined by A and B. So what I do, I have the perpendicular to the plane, so I have a direction now, right? And um, all I need is magnitude. But magnitude is very simple. From this, uh, the magnitude of B is equal to magnitude of X times uh, magnitude of A times sine of the angle alpha between x and a but angle is 90 degree so the sine of 90 degree is 1 so from this we define that modular modulus of x is equal to b divided by a 
So geometrically we have solved the problem. We have the plane, we have therefore the direction, and the magnitude vector is this, and the only little problem is direction, so we have to really make sure that the direction is from A to X, is the, uh, the, uh, the rule of uh, um, the screwdriver or the rule of the right hand, whatever it is, so the orientation of X to this way or to that way, given the magnitude, is very simple to uh, establish. So geometrically we solve the problem. Now let's talk about algeb al algebraic approach. Algebraic approach is also kind of easy, uh, but a little bit involved as far as the calculations are concerned. So I will start it and will present the system of equations basically, but I'm not going to solve this. Solution is in the textual part of this lecture. Now, how to solve it? Well, in, again, in the main course, theoretical course, where I explain what vectors are, what vector product is, I have actually in coordinates this thing I can explain, I can express in coordinates of, of A, B, and X. And I'll just write it down. I took it from the lecture or from any uh, textbook you have what's the uh, coordinate representation of this product. It's basically very simple. B1 is equal to x2 times a3 minus x3 times a2. And these are then cyclical. B2, uh, that would be x3. After 3, you have 1 minus x1, a3. And B3 is equal to, after x3, go x1. After a1, a2, x2, a1. So this is how it's expressed in um, coordinates. This is exactly the same as this. This is a vector representation. This is the coordinate rep re representation. Now, the problem with this is it's three equations with three unknown, right? However, it's not independent. and. Um, the fact that it's not independent basically follows logically from whatever I was talking about um, non-unique solution. Without this additional condition, I do not have unique solution. So this cannot, this cannot have a unique solution. And yes, indeed, if you will r r represent this as a system of three equations, uh, linear equations with three unknowns and take the determinant of the matrix of a coefficients, you will see that the determinant is equal to zero, which means there is no unique solution. But you need this one. So what is this solution? Well, you can use either this one or perpendicularity of A to B or perpendicularity of X to B. So all three perpendiculars are correct. So you need this third thing. I, for instance, prefer to have between known this additional condition. So it's not just any A and B, but you can also has, have A1x1 plus A2x2 plus A3x3 is equal to 0, or B1x1 plus B2x2 plus B3x3 is equal to 0. So all these are true, and any one of them would be sufficient to add to the system of three equations to basically make a system of four equations with uh, four unknowns, and you can solve it now. And what I will do is, I'm not going to solve it, it's just a linear system, and again, I have full solution in the notes for this lecture on unizor.com, but I will write down the uh, result. x1 is equal to a2b3 minus a3b2 divided by delta square, where delta, well, it's not really, I'll, I'll, I'll rather pay it, pay it as a square, the modulus of a square. Now, uh, x2 is equal to a3b1 minus a1b3 divided by a square, and x3 is equal to 
after a3 goes a1 it's all cyclical minus a2 b1 divided by square root of a okay now this is the result of the solution of um, this system of four different equations where modulo a square is basically a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square that's the length square okay so and this is the end of the algebraic part now I'm thinking I'm looking at this and what are the numerators of these three things well if you will look at them attentively you will see that that's exactly the representation of a vector product b whatever I was writing before as a representation in um, um, uh, coordinates of x tam uh, tam times a what looks very similar but instead of b I had x basically now this is the representation of a minus uh, t t uh, cross product b okay so what does it mean does it mean that x is equal to a cross b divided by modulo of a square well the answer is yes and it's very simple to again explain logically and geometrically look at the picture again now this is my x this is my a and this is my b and we have decided already that all three are mutually perpendicular which means x is already perpendicular to a and b which means if I will multiply a times b vector multiplication I will get some vector which is like x but maybe stretched or reduced in length etc but direction would be correct so basically what I can say that a times b is x times some coefficient scalar and what is this scalar well again let's just have the length of a times b is equal to length of x times this scalar k now what is this it's a times b times sine in, in, in between but sine is equal to 1 because they are perpendicular to each other so that goes to x times k from which you can determine k as being uh, a b multiplication divided by x but x we have already determined since this is true this is also true so x is equal to b divided by a so b divided by a and we're, we have a square so k is equal to a square well actually it's divided not, not multiplied doesn't really matter all right so that's basically a logical explanation of this formula it, it actually follows from the fact that a times b gives me some vector which is collinear to um, to the x and I need this coefficient because uh, it will divide the, the length of this would be a times b so a would be uh, uh, cancel out so I will have b over a which is exactly b over a as I have calculated based on the given um, condition for x all right so that's it we have approached this problem from geometrical standpoint from algebraic standpoint we got the formula basically for coordinate and then kind of decided that logically it should be that this is a correct formula well, now in this case I don't need this 
So if you will have a vector um, product of a and b and divide by uh, square of the a's lengths, you will get the vector x. Okay, so that's basically it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this uh, lecture. Notes contain uh, detailed uh, calculations for algebraic case. Well, I think it's very important if you will do it yourself. But look at the, whatever the notes are. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.